Hi there, and in this video I will explain to you how simple binary works and then show you a schematic which will show you how to make a speed adjustable single or dual 4-bit binary counter. So I'm Darren and I'm your host and you're watching Darren DIY. So these are the main parts that we are going to need. I'm going to tell the exact values for example of the resistors and the capacitors further in the video. But before we begin let's make sure you the viewer know what binary is. So what is binary? Binary is like a language but instead of using letters it uses the numbers 0 and 1. 0 meaning off and 1 meaning on. 0 meaning false or 1 meaning true so these are the main things that the binary means it just uses 0 and 1's but the question is how do you count numbers using binary? so the 4 bit numbers they start by 1 2 and 8 so this is an 8 bit number for example this is the 1 this is the 2 this is the 3rd bit the 4th the 5th, the 6th, the 7th, and the 8th. And it continues going on. For example, in computers, the number of the bits is 64, which is a huge number which goes on to the quintillions. So it counts like this. So let's imagine that there are 4 LEDs. We have the 1st bit, the 2nd, the 3rd, and the 4th. So, and as we said earlier, they go like 1, 2, 4 and 8. So this is 1, this is 2, this is 4, and this is 8. So in order to count, so to count, for example, the number 5, you turn on the this LED, the, the third bit, which has a value of 4, and the first bit, which has a value of 1, and make up the number 5. For example, if you want to make 15, you can turn all of the LEDs on, and if you add these up, you get the number 15. Now you can continue on doing this, and as the more you go up, the larger the number that will be. So now that you have a rough idea of what binary is, let's get into the main subject of this video, building a 4-bit binary counter. So as you can see, to build this binary counter, I'm going to use the 4520IC which has a dual 4-bit counter and then also because this 4-bit counter needs a pulse in order to count the bits we're just going to use a generic 555 timer so now let's get to the schematic so as you can see here this is a generic 555 timer circuit as you can see this generates a pulse signal which is a square wave which goes on like this So let's start by making the very simple 555 timer circuit. So the first thing that we are going to need to do is to connect pin 1 to ground and connect pin 8 to the positive rail. After that we are going to need to connect pin 6 to pin 2. Also good practice is to cut out the connections that you made using the pencil. Now we are going to need to connect the capacitor from pin 2 to negative. In my case I'm using a 1 microfarad capacitor. And also because this is a polarized capacitor, we are going to need to make sure that the positive side is onto the microchip side and the negative goes onto the ground rail. Now we are going to need to connect our potentiometer or variable resistor from pin 6 to pin 7. In my case, I'm using a 500 kilo ohm potentiometer. Also, if you're wondering, this potentiometer is to control the speed. Also note that you don't have to use a 500 kilo ohm potentiometer. If you want, you can experiment with different values. Now we are going to need to connect a 100 kilo ohm resistor from pin 7 to pin 8. I never thought... 
Now we are going to need to connect pin 4 to the positive rail. So just like that our timer circuit is complete. So now let's hook up a jumper wire from pin 3 which is the output of the timer to pin 1 of the 4520IC. Now since I'm building the two bit counters at the same time, I'm going to connect the clock pins with each other so that they count at the same rate. As you can see we have the first counter and the second counter. So I'm going to connect pin 9 which is the second clock pin to pin 1. But if you want you could just build one counter. But I'm building two so that you can see the, the power of this IC. Now we are going to need to connect a 330 ohm resistor from pin 16 to pin 2. Now we are going to need to connect pin 16 to the positive rail. Now we are going to need to connect pin 7 to pin 8. And then connect pin 8 to the ground rail. Now we are going to need to connect 4 LEDs from pin 3 to pin 6. But if you're using an iron volt battery for the power source, make sure that you put a resistor so that you won't burn the LEDs. And just like that our counter is complete. So let's cut the power supply and test it out. And as you can see our counter is working. And we can control the speed using the potentiometer. So as you can see it is working, but let me slow it down by changing the capacitor from 1, far 1 microfarad to 10 microfarad so that I can explain to you what's actually happening. So now that it is slowed down, let me explain to you how it works. So as soon as I turn on the power supply, it starts counting. So as you can see this is 1. 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15. So as you can see, I think that you can see the pattern here. The way that the microchip counts numbers is by adding up the bits together which makes up a particular number. For example, adding the first and second bit makes the number 3. Adding the fourth and first bit makes the number 9. And so on. And as you can see here, it is going really fast. But that's actually going very slow. In computers, where you have a 2.4 GHz speed in the CPU, that's like going 2.4 billion cycles per second. Which is extraordinary actually, because it's going really really fast. We're here it's only going up to like 50 Hz or so. So if you follow the full schematic here, and you connect the two bit counters together, you get two bit counters as you can see. And I can control the speed using the potentiometer. So that's it for this video and I really hope that you enjoyed this 4-bit counter video. So you will find everything linked in the description below from where you can buy them. And also for your knowledge, since this thing only draws around 5 milliamps, it can run for weeks if not months. If you like this one, I'm sure that you will like one of my others which involves woodworking or electronics. So I will have some videos here on the left or right of the video. So make sure to go watch them all, because I'm sure that they will interest you. So if you like this video, make sure to go and drop a like down below, and subscribe if you are new, so that you won't miss any new videos like this one. And make sure to tell me down below what do you think about this video. Should I make more electronics videos, or should I make more woodworking videos? You tell me down below, I'll leave the decision in your own hands. So as always guys, stay safe and have fun, I'll see you in the next one, bye bye.